This is Ariocarpus retusus. It's a slow-growing species of cactus endemic to Mexico, and on this episode we'll be looking for its habitat and telling you how it's threatened by these cows. Welcome back to the channel. We are still in the Chihuahuan Desert in the state of Nuevo León now. We traveled about two and a half hours south of Coahuila where we were on the last episode. If you haven't seen that one, check it out. It was really, really good. Uh, we are now in big, big cactus territory. We're going to see some really nice and fat Echinocactus platicantus. And we're also going to see some smaller, but very, very nice cacti, Ariocarpus retusus. That's why I'm wearing my shirt. So I hope you really enjoy this one. The last time I was here, it was total drought and the entire mountain was completely dry and there was no green to be seen. But uh, most of the plants now are definitely wide awake and growing a lot of green tissue. We hope to find some stuff in flower because that would be amazing. We have seen already a lot of cacti in bloom. If you've seen one of the past episodes, especially the one in Biesca, we saw some gorgeous Lophophora fritii in bloom. So hopefully we can find some Ariocarpus retusus for you in bloom. The ones we found on this mountain about six months ago were about seven or eight inches wide, really, really old plants. So I really hope you like Ariocarpus. I know I love Ariocarpus. And we're also going to see some of the giants from the Cactaceae family here. Like I said, Echinocactus platicantus. So let's go. found our first Ariocarpus retusus plant. This, I wouldn't necessarily call it a juvenile plant, but it could be around from 10 to maybe 30 years or maybe even older. It's hard to tell depending on how much rain it's received in, during the years it's been on this mountain, but it's a really good sign. Oh, just while I'm here talking to you, I already spotted another one, not two feet away from this one, and it's actually larger. We're gonna show you some nice close-up of these plants because it's kind of hard to see them they like to really blend in with the rocks that are living right around them and that's all part of their survival mechanism. Not only these but a lot of other cacti you find them in rocks that are very very similar colored to them and that's no coincidence. They've evolved to look exactly like their surroundings to avoid predators and mammals and other things that may want to eat them because in the desert whatever has some moisture is fair game for any mammals in in the area so these guys live like to live in straight mineral rock as you see here and they love the sun this is a east facing mountain they receive a lot of sun during the morning up until about 3 to 4 p.m when the sun sets on the west side of the mountain so they get a little bit of uh, afternoon shade. So they receive a lot of strong sunlight all the way up until the afternoon hours. And that's basically the optimal sort of situation for them. Although I did find some way larger plants on the other side of the mountain. So I guess Ariocarpus just likes a lot of sun. Not all Ariocarpus, some do like a little bit of shade, but Ariocarpus retusus, the nicer plants that I've seen are straight in direct sunlight usually. That's what they like. We're gonna go up the mountain and over to the other side, the one that faces the sunset because that's where I found the largest plants. There's a two-headed, really, really large specimen that I really hope we can find. And if we're lucky, we're, we'll find some in bloom. These don't look very stressed. It's been raining around here. They're very plump and they have really nice color to them, but we haven't seen any in bloom. These are the first two specimen we, we found on this mountain. And I wanted to show you right away because it's just very exciting and I'm pretty sure most of you are gonna be just as excited as I am to see them. So check these out. We're gonna keep going up and you hopefully find some larger ones for you. Our 
Campos Retusus can be found mostly on the mountainsides in elevations ranging from 4200 feet above sea level all the way up to 6500 feet above sea level. They like rocky surfaces and they especially love limestone and wherever you are able to find high concentrations of this mineral you find many plants like the ones you see right here. Of all Areocarpus, Retusus is the fastest growing species, but if you've ever grown any Areocarpus, you know that doesn't mean they grow fast at all. These plants are extremely slow growing, and that's partly the reason why their conservation and that of the spaces where they survive is very important, since they would take many decades to bounce back if they were to be removed or if their ecosystems were to be destroyed. This calcified Areocarpus skeleton seemed to be completely eaten from the inside, most likely by a thirsty rodent that in a moment of desperation found a cactus without any spines in the desert as a great opportunity to try to look for some water. Every time I find evidence of this in the desert, I always wonder if the alkaloids found inside some of these plants affect rodents in the same way that they affect human beings. something you don't see very often out in the field. It's a carcass or the remnants of an Echinocactus platicantus plant and it's completely calcified over. Who knows how long it's been dead and who knows what caused the death of this plant. It could have been disease, it could have been drought or it could have even, be, even been extreme rain, too much rain. But that's usually not a likely cause here in habitat. Usually it's either a disease of some sort or extreme drought. I wouldn't necessarily think it was extreme drought because all the, so all the surrounding plants seem to be in very good condition. But I thought it was interesting to show you guys exactly how they sort of melt, just like you would see in cultivation when they rot or whatever. But this is completely dry. When, you know, when they rot in cultivation, they turn to mush. But when they die in habitat, this is sort of what they create is this really tough exoskeleton which is calcified all around. And sometimes out of these, you see smaller pups emerging from the bottom because the bottom or the, the plant, the part of the plant or the part of the stem that lives underneath the soil is still able to produce pups if it wasn't completely eliminated by the disease or whatever killed the plant. You start seeing little branches coming out. In this case, it looks like this was terminal. This plant doesn't seem to be regenerating in any way but I still think it was interesting to show you exactly how these sort of exoskeletons look after they die. As you can see, Echinocactus platiacanthus is a stunning plant able to grow to mind-blowing proportions out in the field, with some specimen even being recorded at measuring up to 9 feet in height. These plants are not just a beautiful part of the landscape, but an integral part of their ecosystems that is sadly threatened due to human overcollection, since the plants are used in Mexico to make a very popular dessert known as Rosca de Reyes. But if you're watching this from Mexico, don't worry, you can do your part just ask for an option made with ate instead of acitron, which doesn't use cactus whatsoever.
As you could tell from the cows at the beginning of this video, this entire area is used for grazing. And believe it or not, that along with mining operations are some of the biggest threats that cacti are facing out in the wild, because the same areas where they have evolved are places where you're able to find high concentrations of mineral that these mining operations are actively looking for. All right, I think this is a pretty good specimen to show you. How about you? This thing must be easily over a hundred years old. It's nice and fat and hydrated. These things contract and grow like any other cactus species. And you can tell by the sort of the spacing in between the ribs, just how drated it is. Right now it looks, or it seems to be very, very, very hydrated and fat. It is a very, very nice specimen of Echinocactus platicantus. We just met a resident of the area, a gentleman that is in charge of taking care of this, of this land. And he explained to us that even though there's been a lot of rain in the region, this particular mountain hasn't received any rain. So we found some remnants of old blooms on this Echinocactus and most of the other Echinocactus plants, but they could be from last season. Since there's no one here to pick off the old flowers, it's hard to tell whether they're from this year or last year or maybe two or three years ago. So we haven't found any, any cacti in bloom. We have only found remnants of old flowers that have been dried up. But everybody seems to be doing pretty well. We didn't find plants that looked severely stressed. And one thing that I think is worth mentioning, was, which was very interesting, is that even though we found most of the plants on this side of the mountain, which is facing west, and on the opposite side of the mountain, which is facing east, um, the plants that seem to be the oldest and the largest, at least of the Areocarpus, are on the top of the mountain, which is kind of odd because you would think that if the conditions are optimal on the top of the mountain where there's more solar radiation, you can imagine it receives sun throughout the entire day. Why aren't there more specimen? Cacti are just picky like that. Sometimes they like a certain area, Sometimes, you know, the weather changes throughout their life cycle. You can imagine that if a plant is 100 years old, the climate has changed and obviously the conditions have changed. So maybe the conditions were right for germination at one point and now they're not really optimal for germination of smaller seedlings, but they are optimal for the very, very large Areocarpus plants that we saw on the top of the mountain, which we're probably showing you right now. So. We found the oldest specimen on the top of the mountain, but the lowest quantity of individuals, of Areocarpus retusus. These guys are everywhere. They don't seem to care. Uh, we found not only adult plants, but also seedlings of Echinocactus platicantus. This is one of my favorite mountains. Again, I say that about every single place I go to here in Mexico, but it's, a, it's an amazing ecosystem. It's a private area. So I imagine poachers don't get to come here and do their thing. So we found mostly everything undisturbed. All the plants that I saw the last time I was here are still here. They're looking nice and plump. Everybody's doing good. So I'm happy. I hope you're happy. We're going to move on to another area, but that's for next episode. So make sure you click subscribe. And if you don't, just make sure you come back to the channel and, you know, Check, check back every once in a while because we're going to be putting out some amazing content. And if you have any comments or suggestions of where we should go next, for sure drop it down in the comment section. We read all of them and we try to reply to most of them. If also you have any questions of cultivation, look me up on Instagram, message me. I don't mind. Catch you on the next episode.